Welcome to the meeting of the North Penn School District's Board of School Directors, June 10th, 2014. Tonight is our regularly scheduled work session. The meeting is being videotaped for community cable channels. Individuals attending this meeting and intending to speak to the board should be aware that they're being videotaped. In order to meet the requirements of the Pennsylvania Sunshine Law, it is necessary to record the names of all citizens to speak to the board during the meeting. To assure compliance with this requirement, it is essential that those planning to address the board come to the microphone, state their name and address, and sign the audience of citizens' logbooks. Uh, members of the audience are asked to limit their questions and comments. To allow time for all those who wish to speak to the board, the board president may ask the individual to yield the microphone to the next speaker, and this is in reference to board policy 8340. Good evening. We will start off our meeting with our guys. Oh, Your guys are up, the color guard. joining the others. Yeah. As we do, uh, from time to time, we do get a chance to honor some of our students and some of the accomplishments of North Penn students. And tonight, we're going to continue with that. Um, so Dr. Dietrich, why don't you take that over? Thank you, Mr. President. We are pleased this evening to recognize two groups. The first group we like to recognize are the members of the North Penn High School Air Force Junior Reserve Officers Training Corps. And with us this evening, we have Major Mark Miller. Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. Major. I'm here to introduce our junior ROTC officers. Um, we've had a very eventful year. Um, these are our cadet leaders, the top four, if you will. Um, this year, they stepped up to become the high school's officers, and they led a group of 126 cadets to an inspection that was done by Headquarters Air Force. They sent an officer up here to inspect them, and they received the highest rating possible, and that rating is an exceed standards. Uh, less than 25% of the units will get that rating um, throughout the Air Force Junior ROTC system. They also rebuilt the drill team, and uh, they coordinated their first overnight drill competition. And in doing that, they, they got six trophies, seven if you count the one ribbon that they got for first place, uh, which matches the number that they've had to date. The cadet leadership was instrumental in our color guard, going down to nationals in Florida, and competing for the first time ever. And they also uh, focused their attention on school and community service outreach. And in doing that, they, they did more than 2,800 hours of community service. And that led to them uh, receiving the Distinguished Unit Award with Merit, which less than 10% of the units get that award as well. Um, and again, that was for the first time in the history of the, the Corps. At this point, I'd like to introduce the members. First, we have Alexandra Arnold. 
She is our current deputy commander. We have Kyle Carbon. He's our outgoing group commander. Patrick Stendel. He is our outgoing deputy commander. And we have Kevin Varga, who took over the unit and is now our new group commander. Guys, this is an opportunity for the full board to congratulate each and every one. So I'd like you to come through. And Major, would you please join them at the end? Would you join them, too? Sure. And I also got one for Denise. Cool. Thank you, okay. sir. Nice to see you. Great job, Don. Another round of applause for these guys. Boy, and for those history buffs that remember the, the, the difficulty it was to come to a conclusion to choose one of these groups and the success they've had since then. It's amazing. Thank you. We also are pleased to recognize this evening members of the North Penn High School Student Government Association. And with us this evening, we have Kyle Berger, the advisor. Thank you, Dr. Dietrich. Uh, we are here tonight to honor the work of North Penn High School Student Government Association. And over the past three years, this organization, uh, which is comprised of our five elected officers, whom we'll meet tonight, uh, about a dozen cabinet members, 30 elected senators, 10 from each grade level, and over 100 uh, classroom representatives from each social studies class at the high school. They've really done a phenomenal job providing the student body with activities to uh, take part in, and, and even more so importantly, uh, doing community service projects. And uh, these students have planned and put on annual homecoming events, uh, electing homecoming king and queen, having a pregame tailgate party. Uh, we've done powder puff football, Red Cross blood drives, um, and in fact, over the past three years, as far as community service is concerned, uh, our organization has raised over $10,000 for charity, and we're very proud of that. Uh, one of the organizations that recently benefited from a charitable activity was the United Way uh, locally. Their Stuff the Bus Foundation, uh, which provides school supplies for students who are in need uh, and can't afford to buy school supplies, backpacks, pens, pencils, etc. Uh, that's a, a cause that's very near and dear uh, to our hearts. And uh, they recently received a $1,000 donation from our organization after a charity dance that we held uh, back in May. Um, for these efforts, among other things, uh, the National Association of Student Councils has named our organization a National Gold Council of Excellence in each of the last three years. I'm proud to say that North Penn High School Student Government Association is one of just 10 such student governments in the entire state of Pennsylvania to uh, have received that award. So we are very proud of that and even more so proud that we've done it three years in a row. So uh, at this point, I'll, I'll introduce the, the five officers who are here with us uh, this evening. First is our recording secretary, Melissa Cubitt. Go ahead. Melissa is going to be attending Syracuse University in the fall. Next up is our corresponding secretary, Bryn Halfpenny. She will be attending New York University in the fall. Congratulations. Thank you. Next is our Vice President, Colleen McGovern. She'll be attending Lafayette College in the fall. Next is our Treasurer, Adrian Newcomer. She'll be attending the University of Pittsburgh in the fall. And finally, our President, Patrick Zancoli, who will be attending the University of Pennsylvania this fall. Guys, we're going to get an opportunity for the full board of administration to congratulate each and every one of you. So please come forward. And Kyle, would you join them at the end for us? Certainly. <laughs> Thank you.
high school continues to astound us, doesn't it? Now, how many we even recognize this this year? Three, three different publications. There's only 13 yeah. high schools on that list from Pennsylvania, if I'm right. On the one, I think you're correct. On the one yeah. list, yeah. which puts us in the top four percent of high schools in Pennsylvania. Yeah. Yeah. And if I remember right, 17 years ago when we first came here, that was one of our goals to get to the top five. So we awesome. did it. So we, we can go. Now? We can go now. It's over. <laughs> Are you reading the dates or the rebroadcast? Oh, yeah. For those who uh, want to see this again on Comcast 28 and uh, Verizon 29, this is going to be rebroadcast uh, on the 11th at 7.30, the 12th, 13th at 12.30 and 7.30, and then on the 16th at 12.30 again, so you get a chance to see it again. All right, we're going to move forward with our work session agenda for June 10th. Uh, the first discussion will be from support services with a request from Norgwen Baseball. So who's going to fed in this one? Johnny, you're up. Sure. Um, I'd like to introduce uh, George Wicks, the president of uh, Norgwen. They're uh, requesting uh, to be able to erect a new concession stand on the Pembroke property. On the land we gave Upper Gwinnett that they gave them? It's leased to Upper Gwinnett and sublet to them, yes. Was there a caveat in our agreement that they had to come to us to discuss any building? Do I remember? Um, yeah, yeah, I know the, the township does. Yes. Yeah, because we're, we're good neighbors, so they want to talk to us, especially since it's our land. I appreciate that. Why don't you guys, uh, do you want to do a presentation? Do they have something they yes, can show us? Yes, they do. Why don't uh, somebody, why don't you, somebody, so the public can hear it at home, too. Somebody should stand at that microphone. And if somebody wants to be Vanna White and hold it up. Well, I think what we'll do is we'll use the old Okay. Nope, flip it over. Yeah, in terms of the television, though, those guys got to kind of shoot. Yeah, Actually, somebody's. can you guys take a shot of this and then put it up later as a, as a display while he's talking? You want to do that? Somebody's got to be in charge of that. Yeah, let, let, go ahead, take a shot at that. Can you do that? This way we can have some continuity for the public viewing audience at home. All right, thank you. Okay. Okay. You got to go to the mic. Yeah. That's good. Nah, it might stay there. Do we have a portable mic? No. We're right there. Okay. So um, we're going to erect, uh, it's, well, as part of our revitalization program, which has started many years ago, and we've done several programs in the past, we're going to uh, replace what we call the lower snack bar, which is a snack bar that services softball and the little leagues. So um, what I have here is a sketch of the building. Uh, I'll get to that. I don't already know it. Do we got more? No, no. Sketches of the buildings and drawings. And uh, what we Dave has out is uh, a plot so you can see where it's going to be placed. And if you look at the plot, in the, it's right about in the center. There should be something that says existing snack bar and new snack bar. So um, we've uh, started this program for the snack bar about a year or so ago. And uh, yes. we have the drawings. They've been through one pass of the uh, permits committee, and we're making some updates to the drawings. And we have uh, funding, uh, some of the funding in place. And we're looking to get started with your approval this year by laying some of the uh, okay. foundation work. Can, can, um, sure. Any questions? For orientation purposes, if you turn it upside down, it's a little easier to follow where yeah. it is because of us. Dave, do you have an extra one? But uh, let me ask you a couple of basic, real basic questions before I open it up to the field. Um, how big is that going to be, size-wise? It's uh, 20 by 40. 20 by 40. Including the patio. How big is the one we have at the high school? I'm not sure, to be honest with you. I mean, it's a ticket window and a kitchen. But bigger than that. Yeah, I think you're right. Okay, for proportion, that helps. The building itself is 20 by 24. Um, we could make it bigger. You are. Well, no, no, here's why I'm bringing this up. <laughs> you are aware that we're in discussions with Upper Gwinn to solve some drainage issues in the region, right? I mean, they've come to us about building and making sure that we have good flood protection and That's flood correct. things. Are they going to subject you to the same kind of thing? that? Because it, it floods badly in the wintertime. Badly, is that a good way to say it? Well, you, pres you present... You pres oh, no, no, this isn't the dry high. This is the dry high. This is the dry high. Yeah, but you presented this to... Uh, my understanding is Upper Gwinnett already, correct? Yes, they're well and aware of what's going on. And did they tell you about any concerns regarding? Uh... No. Okay. 
So and I think we'll be going through the permit process side. with Upper Gwinnett too. Side. And we know Len will be in discussions with them. I'll bring that up with them. All right. Okay, and make sure that whatever we do power to is. It. You already have power there now, right? Power. You have power there now, don't you? Oh, yeah. Well, we'll be involved too. All right. Let's. Are there any other questions? But yeah, let's start on this side. Anybody got any questions you want to ask directly over? I don't have any questions, but I can say I served many a hot dog from that uh, hot dog stand. <laughs> <laughs> I'm glad you're renovating it. Well, well, next year maybe you can serve some more. <laughs> Thank you. Hey, Johnny, you want to ask any questions? Do you have any questions? Well, let, let Carolyn. No, I, I don't think so. Okay. Oh, um, if we if we approve this, how, how long? Will, it's just, I'm assuming that this is you're going to build this. This isn't like a module or anything like that. No. Right? Yes. It'll be. You're going to build. It's a when, do you, when, when you get a final proof, when you expect completion, um, before next season. Starts. Okay. So it won't be done at all this season. It's just you're going well, to the build season's it. basically over for the little right. league fields. It'll oh, be done. Me. It'll be done around the middle of the end of June, and we probably won't even have the permits in place by that point. So. Okay. I was just wondering the time aligned. I forgot sure. to ask that before. The okay. Cost of the project. Yeah. What is the cost, cost of the project? Um, with we're, we're estimated to be between eighty and a hundred thousand okay. dollars. Uh, no, we're going to do it all with private funding. <clears throat> well, I'm sure if people want to give toward it, they could. Well, yeah, we have. <laughs> yeah, we, right. we do have a large majority of the pieces in place, and some of sure. the contractors have donated time and materials wow. already. So we're that's great. We're we're well on our way here. Yeah, that's a good thing. We just okay. have to get through these these hurdles so we can uh, break sure. some ground. Okay. Yeah, Mr. Kerr. Do, uh, do we get a percentage of uh, the... Oh. Oh. You <laughs> there know, we go. You, I'll split my cut with well, you. <laughs> you know, I think he's hey, looking for a discount. He's, he's looking for... A, hey, Kerr's, Kerr is yeah, looking yeah, for yeah. a discount from he, a hot dog yeah. or something. That's what he's looking for. You guys will watch his game. You know what? Court. When you come over, we'll give you a deal on the hot dogs. There you one, go. I told you that's what it is. Yeah, one dollar yeah. a hot dog. <laughs> I don't want that. I think he's just messing with you. A little bit. I can't see any reason why we wouldn't. Do this. Does anybody see a reason? I, I can. I just. Well, I want to make a statement so they're quite aware of this. We have a 99-year lease with. You are bright today. Right. 99 years, and then any any improvements on the lot revert back to us because we take the property back. Mm -hmm. So that's the reason why they're sending you to us to discuss this because we own this place, and anything that gets put on it becomes 99 us. 99 years. When does 99, 99 years? Yeah. Well, it was only a couple years ago when we signed the lease. So we got. 96 more years. Yeah. But I, I just want to make sure everybody understands why they're, they have, have to, to come and talk us. to us. Besides being a neighbor and, and those issues in our land, it reverts back to us at 99 years. No, it's, that's correct. Aren't that's they reason trying why. to put a sign up, too? My organization. What's that? Aren't they trying to put a sign or a uh, school board have, up? They already have a school board. They, up. Oh, that's it. That's the other group. They, the other, yeah, they, I mean, I just want to say, since I've been on the board, they've always oh, been, they've always taken care of that facility and the grounds really nicely. Yes. I mean, I'll, is that right, John, Mr. Strobel? Yes. We'll, we'll attest correct. to that. Yeah, you can thank Dave for uh, Mr. Yeah, Sullivan. Thank you, Dave. Dave really, does, uh, I, mean, I just want to say that. that. Every work. time I've been there, I mean, my kids played ball, you know, travel team or whatever, and they played there. It was always a great facility, so I got nothing but nice things to say about it. Mr. Sullivan, they, there, there is a scoreboard that the Squires uh, right. football organization next door uh, uses. Did they, uh, did they give you any other requirements? Like, I know I'm sure they gave you fire suppression and everything else, but... Did the they, uh, permits they, group? Yeah, did they ask you for anything else? Um, they basically gave us some updates that we're making drawings, and we've been through the Board of Health. And right. Because of our status as a uh, youth organization and, and just seasonal, we're exempted from the Board of Health, So, which is a new role, by the way. And we were fortunate yeah. for that. <laughs> we, are, we are adding a, a grease trap and right. enhancing. Right. Is, yeah, is, is there sores up there now, public sores? That far up? Uh, yes, at one of the fields. You're going to have to connect to that? No. Are they public? No. Um, what we're going to do for this, there is a, for the wastewater from the facility, we're going to have a gray water tank. Okay. Added expense for you guys. Can Any you put up questions? some? Can you take up? Right. Oh, yeah. Believe me, we've seen the drainage of things. Yeah, I, I'm going to repeat what George just said. So uh, right, some yeah. of the work has been done by Upper Gwinnett. They've been working with us all along on, on, and on setting up so fields. we can get to this point with the utilities and, and some of the pathways and, when, and when some we, of the past projects. It's been part first, of a long-term plan. When we first put this out and Upper Gwinnett approached us as part of this package was to do this for you guys, and, and it was already a, a nice relationship anyway. We thought it was 
worthy of the consideration because of all the things we've done together. So I don't really see a problem with this. I don't hear anybody complaining. No, as long as you meet with I the requirements a for question. Go ahead, you want to ask something? Yeah. Can you put up advertising on that? Um, we're debating that right now. It's part that could be part of the fundraiser. It depends on how much we actually gonna need. One of the fundraising ideas is, is pavers. Oh, um, so that would be advertising, but it'll be subtle because they'll be in the ground, right? Um, if we get a substantial donation, that might change things. <laughs> and hopefully that could happen. <laughs> that's the alternative revenue yeah, chairman <laughs> talking. Do you have some idea? Yeah. Yeah. I'm willing to share revenue. <laughs> I can't help myself. <laughs> Thank you very much. Thank you. Uh, at this point, I don't really see any problems about it. I would like to be kept informed each step and then whatever your final approvals are, if you can make sure that Mr. Strobel gets copies sure. of everything and any plans and designs. I would just prefer that you make sure that this thing is completely safe for all visitors. I know that's already probably in your mind anyway, but uh, that one of the biggest concerns we've ever seen is making sure anything that gets done on our property or used by anybody around us, just make sure it meets all the requirements for fire safety. And again, you got to get all approval by the townships regarding that, correct? Okay. Thank you very much, guys. Okay, thank you. Thank you. Good presentation. All right. Um, our our second discussion tonight, or our second top or area region, what do you want to call it? Committee is going to be uh, education, community, and policy. We have a revision for the board policy fifty one forty three, the school nutrition service, family fiscal responsibility. And then we have the board, I'm sorry, isn't that an administrative yeah, regulation? Right, administrative temporary. regulation 5143, which is the school nutrition service implementation of the Family Fiscal Responsibility Act. So why don't we break up that discussion? You're going to handle that? Sure. Dr. Oven, go ahead. Absolutely. Thank you. Uh, when we discussed this proposed revision at ECP, the committee determined that we would bring this to work session because there was some discussion about this when we implemented in August. If you recall last year, uh, the school nutrition service, student nutrition services department requested that we adopt this policy to address some issues we were having with um, non-payment of charges for school lunches. After having lived with it for a year and received feedback from parents, from staff, the uh, Student Nutrition Services Office asked that we make some revisions. So I'm gonna globally talk about some things and then we'll get, I'll get into summarizing what the specific revisions are and then we'd be happy, I or Mr. Scrocky would be happy, happy to answer any questions that you have. Um, one thing that we looked at was because there was a lot of detail in the policy, we separated out the actual logistics of implementation into a regulation and that's why you see so many strike throughs in the policy because we want to keep the policy more a general guideline as to what the board's position is on this topic and put the specifics into the regulation. So things like at what dollar amount do we call home, that sort of thing, which can be subject to change or in a regulation rather than having to continually bring the policy back to the board for revisions. When we implemented this, uh, we did separate out and still have differences between high school, middle school, and elementary school in terms of what the charging policies are. The recommendation is to retain the current procedure where high school students are not allowed to charge lunches at all. Middle school students are allowed to charge one lunch. And the majority of the change is actually with elementary. Previously, students after three charges at elementary uh, received a phone call home to notify the parents that the student had charged, there was a negative balance, and the expectation was that the parent would send the money in to cover the balance. The recommendation is to move that to 10 Meal, to 10 meals before that second phone call goes home. Part of the reason for that is we are recommending that as opposed to the original practice, which was to do a once a week notification of a negative balance, we are trying to be a little more proactive and moving to a once a week notification of a low balance so that the notification goes home before the child charges the meal. The other thing that Pam looked at was making the dollar amount for that low balance notification high enough that the student could still cover a week of lunches. So that if we're doing a once a week notification, you are notifi notified in, a, in effect a week before the account would run out of money so that 
you have an opportunity to get the money in the account before you would actually go into the negative. So we feel that that will help to address um, being more proactive about parents being notified of the low balance and having the ability to get the money into account before a charge occurs. After the 10th charge at the elementary level, what we are proposing to do is to go to a brown bag lunch for the child rather than the regular meal. So we would still be feeding the child but providing an alternate lunch at that point until such time as the negative balance is cleared, okay? That's the largest change to the uh, procedures in terms of how many charges and what happens when you charge. As I said, we will do the low balance notice as after five days before the account would run out, and that amount will be determined by SNS every year based on the price of the lunch that year. We are also looking to um, add some language about charging for not just return checks, but also for insufficient funds in My Payments Plus, which is the software system we use where parents can deposit money in order to um, cover lunches for their children. So that language is, would be added to the policy and that it would be automatically deducted from the student's account in My Payments Plus. So we've also had some feedback uh, in terms of potentially adding a statement to the regulation about writing off bad debt. The pr current practice is that we hold that debt for a year, and at, after one calendar year, if that debt is not resolved, then that, in effect, is a write-off of bad debt. If it's the will of the board, we can certainly develop some language to that effect and include that in the policy or the regulation. So I... And that's the electronic payment system. Yeah, it's an electronic payment software system, so parents can use, I believe it's a credit card, correct, yeah. Steve? Or they can bring in money and, and hand it to the cashier, and it can be deposited to the student's account. So, for instance, I could send in or charge on my card $50, and then the lunches every day for my child would be deducted from that $50. The way we had originally implemented this, the parent did not receive a notification from us that the account was getting low. They received notification when the account went into the negative. So what we're looking to say is, is you know, just for our, just for the sake of the discussion, at something like $15 left, you would receive a notification that the balance is getting low so that you can deposit the money before the account actually runs into the negative. So th it's not can the you parent? set it up so they just, you, you can just take money out? I mean, can parents just say, mm -hmm. you know, I believe $25 a pop, take it out on a... I believe with the credit like the card option, you can do right. that, correct? Yeah. You can do yes. payment option. Yeah. You can do that. Auto, yes. auto replenish. You can do that. Auto replenish yeah. on the website. <laughs> yes. <laughs> yeah, have you not seen Easy Pants? No, they whack yeah. me for seventy bucks when I run out of money. So is that <laughs> yes. notification? So, so, so just that. a so it, that can be done through My Payments Plus. Use of, use of My Payments Plus is voluntary for the parent, but they can set it up so that there's an auto replenishment. Right. If, if they do that. How do you hit them up for the twenty-five dollars on My Payments Plus? When does that come? They go negative? If they go negative, if we if we go negative, in effect, what would happen is we would add a charge just like we would for a uh, a check with insufficient funds. So they would have to cover the negative balance plus the charge for going into the negative. I thought that was for return checks only, though. Yeah, yeah it was. The proposal is to also give the charge for insufficient so, funds so in my payments plus. Negative, you mean auto? Twenty five bucks. No, 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 wait a minute. Are, are, we, talking about, are we talking about a $25 insufficient mm -hmm. charge? Are we talking about an automated, we charge you $25 to your credit card, now you're not in trouble anymore? No, 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 no. Listen, no. say it again. It's, Can you, it's a $25 insufficient charge. charge. Yeah. That's, that's not right. right. That's yeah, not right. Yeah, how, how does that work? That's not right. If I'm no, able to charge right. you $25 for insufficient funds, can I charge them for 50 bucks and put in money in their account? My Payments Plus, you can actually pay with a credit card or right. a check payment. Right. So if you indicate you're paying with a check and you don't have sufficient, sufficient funds, funds in your right. account, that you'll part. be charged a fee at that That's point. That's a bad check. I'm talking, I'm talking about check. you put the 25 bucks in and you go negative. What mm -hmm. happens in yeah. My Payments Plus? In My Payments Plus, well, you, you, run, you run out of money at that point in time. It would be no different whatever balance is in the student's account if the student paid by cash or check is there, there is not a, is there an additional charge. charge for them to go into the negative on my you can in my payments plus you yeah. can't you okay. can't go negative right. in my payments plus so how do you track it when they get to 10 free lunches uh, there's something set up in the the system so that tracks mm -hmm. yeah. Yeah. Tr tracks the number of uh, meals that we're going to have to research that too. 
They aren't. No, they're they're not. Not. Well, they're not. Not. The brown bag. Right. I understand your question right. too. And see if a check is is returned, but but NSF. this says and for insufficient yeah, funds for my payments. What does that mean? Yeah. I thought that was just if you for checks. Nothing in there. That means you're going to pay in order to start back up again. You got to pay twenty five bucks. You know. No. Well, yeah. we can take it. We can take a look at that language. Well, Mr. Kerr and it revise clear, that before sure it comes clear. to the board for the first reading. Well, I, so that but, notification, is that coming from the school district or is that you have to sign up for that in the My Payments Plus? There's both, actually. There's actually okay. two notifications. <laughs> okay. If parents are electing to, to pay via My Payments Plus, they can set up parameters that notifies them via email. Right. And those parameters okay. can be at $25, $50. You basically name the amount. There's a second set series of notifications that will come via school messenger. Right. Okay. And that's where if a student uh, has a low balance of about $15, that's when the notifications will go out or when the student starts charging the meals. Right. So in effect, what student nutrition services will do every week is pull a list of all students whose account balance is below the cut point mm -hmm. and then generate a school messenger message to those families so that if they're so that if they um, have not set up my payments plus for a low balance notification. We are also doing a low balance notification. Make sure that uh, we catch anybody who is at that point. Is there going to be some kind of check, like after a one year period, to see is this working? Yeah, absolutely. You know, are we doing better? Yeah, exactly. Absolutely. Maybe we absolutely. come back and the policy mm -hmm. needs to be changed. Sure. I'm not absolutely. a big fan of the brown bag. Well, the brown bag is a federal program, right? Yeah, right. Yeah, I'm still correct. not sure that you know, no one's denied. Or embarrassed. I guess there's yes. Two things that concerns well, me the most. I don't want that to happen. Well, I think the mean? brown bag has potential to embarrass someone. Oh, that's, that's a 10, ten, 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 that's a ten not paid days. Right. Right. Or lunches. Right. That doesn't mean it's going to be any less embarrassing. That might make it more well, embarrassing that they've been. Look at the evolution, though, of, of this problem. The, before, when you were on free and reduced lunch for your family, you had a special code. Mm -hmm. And you had to say it out loud so everybody knew what you were and who you were. Right. And now we've gone to a payment system where they just give their, their student ID number right. or their ID number, and then they get paid. The, the, the issue is we're, we're carrying five dollars $6,000 a year in mm -hmm. bad debt mm -hmm. from people not paying us. And the real question becomes, is this going to improve that situation? The second thing is, I mean, I, and I hate to bring up that easy pass thing, but I mean, it's real. I mean, I, I don't get a choice. They reset me mm -hmm. back to the 75 or 70 bucks, and I pay. And I, don't get me wrong, I use it up. It takes time. Mm -hmm. But I mean, are we going to end up going there at some point? Right. I, I think I another know, advantage, and I understand, I think I understand yeah. Mr. Solomon, you can't, where you're coming you can't from. Force you pass. No, I know on easy pass. No, I would. Do it as a public no. Well, it, it, the, question be, the question becomes I mean, you, you don't want to deny kids lunch. That's not the issue. So we're handling that. We're handling the idea that there's no embarrassment, the Joe's right. factor that right. he's concerned right. about. Now this becomes a question is if a parent's going to sign up and set the parameters right, they're never going to have to worry about this because auto replenishment may is give them the answer. Yeah. yeah. If you set yeah. it up to do that, yes. I'm talking about the, the person who didn't do it, let it go, hasn't paid. Now the question becomes what do you do? Correct. We can't I'm mandate sure that they set up the sure system. Them calling that in way. Or coming in online and doing their own thing right. and, and charging it, yeah. Right. So, so if they, it doesn't solve the problem. I'm confused now. You said there is auto replenishment built into it. My Payments Plus is a third party software. Right. The person, I believe, if I understand correctly, has the choice whether to set it up to auto replenish, order. correct? Yeah, absolutely. Okay. Yeah, we can't mandatory. force them to auto replenish. If they, if they don't do it. Opt out of auto replenish. Well, well, they can. Well, right. That's, that they do correct. That Correct. Well, I think they have to yeah, opt into them. it. Right. I think right. they have to opt into right. auto yeah, replenishment and not right. opt out. Right. Which right. I would think you, you, would want opt <laughs> in, you, you would want to force them to opt out of it, not opt in. So you get more people right. to passively yeah. opt in. And we can, we can <laughs> check into that, Mr. Sullivan. I don't know that we have control over that because it's a third party vendor. I, I th and I appreciate the comments made. I also believe that. Another advantage to going to 10 is that one of the things that the School Nutrition Services Department will do is to gently encourage parents to consider the free and reduced lunch Correct. program. So Correct. if they are having difficulty, sometimes things happen suddenly, somebody loses a job and it doesn't get replenished and you know now they're starting to have charges. It gives them 10 
days there to be able to get all that paperwork filed and get approved Correct. and get on the free and reduced lunch. Correct. Right. All right, so, so when they, they can come, deal with it, and there's Correct. not a problem. Right, and, and Student Nutrition Services is very good about working with the principals when there is a hardship situation as well, so that if they're made aware that there is a hardship situation, we take care of it because as one of you said, we, you know, our preference is not to have children miss lunch. Mm -hmm. You know, we have to find the balance between trying to make sure all children have a healthy lunch and not letting a debt continue to escalate. So. You know, what, we, what they've worked very hard to try to find that balance. Because the principal only has so much fair change in his or her mind. <laughs> it's a heck of an evolution, too. Right. Don't forget our Absolutely. formal system before the my payment system was. We had people calling them to remind them that their kid right. is eating for free right now. Do you know if less students are using my payment? That was a collection issue because for our my, secretary. I stopped using they it because the they were charging. It was free before, so... I, honestly, I don't know. We can check on that and get back so to you. I minute. really don't know what can, can that the participation let me, let me rate this, is now. Let me circle previously. this conversation around. So, as yeah. the policy is written, do we need any further explanation? I think. Sure that you know. Mr. Kerr brought up a valid point. Are, are we right? The issue as written on right. insufficient, insufficient funds. Right. Well, we'll as it sounds now. It's, it's, there's it something not right. It goes both directions. Low. Right. Right. We'll check that. We'll check that language prior to the first reading at the board meeting next week and make sure that okay. that language reflects what accurately happens. Could you also distribute the regulation? Yeah. So it is. It's it's attached. No, I mean, if you make any changes to it. Oh sure, absolutely. Oh sure. So if we put that right off language in, absolutely. Yeah. We will. We'll distribute. Uh, we'll distribute both again uh, once we make the request changes. And I. It's a I, sensitive topic for. Yeah. It, it is, is absolutely. And, and I'm really to have to chew on the brown bag thing. I, I mean, it, it, it marks. It's a valid point. It marks mm -hmm. a kid. It does. It's well, I don't know that. if it's an option now. It's, it, I believe there are school, some schools who are doing it now. And the way they tend to address it, my understanding is they know which students need the brown bag lunch. So they actually address it without the child getting into line. So that it's not like the child's in line to get to the cashier and say, oh, no, you get the brown bag. They address it before the child gets into line to try to minimize the possibility that the child is in any way embarrassed by not receiving the same lunch. You got to look, you got to, you got to see Mr. Sullivan's face as you were talking about I that. know. Like that, sound, that, sound, that doesn't sound like it solved his problem at all, the way he was looking. Yeah. yeah. It's, it's, it's always difficult. It, it is, and it's really, it's really the board's discretion whether, whether. The world has rules. Yeah, yeah, no, yeah. When I ran for this office, I don't remember ever talking about school lunches. Yeah. I remember eating them. <laughs> I remember sitting on those horrible, hard chairs in those cafeterias for a while. I, I just feel like if a kid can't get his family to pay for the, the lunch, the kid's carrying you know a, big, a lot more than just I think 99.5% of right. the people don't worry about that. It's not an issue right. for them. It's, it's just there are some people, as you can see from this dead debt or bad debt service, and we're carrying $5,500 right now. And, and I think the way I mean, we somebody have, didn't pay. The way we have this set up, what we also tried to look at was um, a lot of factors there. Who, well, and and if it's hardship, one problem, they have a hard one problem. can hold an elementary child less responsible right. for making sure right. that they have the money than an older sure. child. You know, developmentally, yep. we believe that it's best to have different rules for different age groups. You're right. You're sure. Yeah, that's, that's solid. Can we uh, revisit this if necessary? Um, let's take public comment. We okay, have the North Gwen uh, baseball thing tonight and also this policy. If anybody would like to share from the public, please step forward, state your name and address. What are some exciting topics here? All right. Um, so what's moving forward? North Gwen request will come on, come forward. Uh, you'll bring this first reading for this policy and it still may evolve as we go. If anybody thinks of anything else you want to make sure that this policy touches on, please forward it to Dr. Holden. Um, any further, just move to adjourn. All those there. Thank you.